Molo San Bonani. Hello, how's it? Good morning, good morning, good morning to this, the Thursday edition of Vuganazo, your news analysis show that comes to you every morning from 7 a.m. What do you think about yesterday's show, the Wednesday edition that was done live? <laughs> um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that too. Very, very difficult to do this live with that being said good morning welcome to it remember you can get in touch with us here on the bdl show by visiting our website at www.bigdaddyliberty.com there of course you can also pledge some support to the show guys i really encourage you to put aside a hundred rand a month that you can put together and contribute towards the show every month. It does help me hire the editor and indeed some of the journals who I'm beginning to have a conversation about compiling stories exclusively for us. With that being said, find us on social media. All of that information is in the descriptors of this video. Now, with that being said, um, how about we get straight into the news? All right, finally, 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 some action against Umarcus Uester. Yes, that uh, rather dodgy character who's alleged to have uh, effectively overseen one of the biggest scandals, financial scandals in South African history. That dodgy individual who used to be at the helm of the Steinhoff group, who is alleged to have swindled people out of money. Indeed, our own version of Bernie, Bernie Madoff, uh, if the allegations are are to be proven true. Finally, some action against him with the courts having uh, granted the South African Reserve Bank uh, their application, of course, to have his assets attached. That happening earlier this week. And thankfully, as I must, uh, again, just keep commending law enforcement for finally acting. In addition to that, his properties, his various properties have been raided. I want to read a piece from EWN in this regard, um, which gives some further insights into what's happening right now insofar as the progress against the case, or in the case against Umarcus Uester. Uh, EWN writing that the court papers state that the assets include Uyester's uh, Lanzerac, uh, wine farm in Stellenbosch, his Hermanus property, and other assets registered under his Silver Oak Trust, which are valued at over 1.2 billion rand. These are the assets that are being effectively uh, attached by the Reserve Bank. The Western Cape High Court earlier this month granted the South African Reserve Bank's application to attach all assets linked to Yuster, valued at over uh, mentioned the 1.2 billion. The order to attach Yuster's assets and those belonging to his Silver Oak Trust come after years of legal battles against Yuster to face the law. End of quote. Now, you'll remember, of course, that when the information around the financial misgivings and indeed corruption and fraud at Steinhoff started coming out, that the share price in Steinhoff effectively tanked, seeing millions of South Africans, many who had invested in that company through maybe their retirement annuities or whatever the case may be, losing money, including, of course, direct shareholders of Steinhoff, who are very invested in seeing this guy face the music. Um, so that when you see... Uh, Law enforcement, as has been the perception for a while, dragging its feet on this one, it only heightened the suspicion that we always have that in this country, law enforcement is two-tiered. There's one effort uh, for us ordinary plebs where we face the music quite easily, and for the rich, the elites, the political elites and politicians, seemingly everything is slack and quite easy for them. So it's quite encouraging, therefore, to see action in this regard, including, of course, as I mentioned, the raids on these properties where the judge in giving the uh, go-ahead on this also included uh, wide powers for law enforcement to gather evidence, phone data, records, paperwork, etc., etc. Law enforcement needs to act in order to make the case, uh, as, as it should in this country, that everybody is equal before the law. Even the rich should face the music. Yeah, uh, this again. In what is a rather predictable story, the machine that uh, prints 
uh, seemingly the only machine in this country that prints driver's licenses. You'll remember a while back that that same machine had broken down for months on end and can only be uh, either replaced or re uh, rebuilt or that is fixed in Germany owing to those long delays which saw the backlog in the issuing of driver's license balloon in this country to wait of over even three months while well, that machine has now broken down again 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 Yep, the machine has broken down again rather predictably. Why do I say it's rather predictable? Because I've always said this. Anytime something is monopolized by government, politicians and political elites, it is prone to incompetence. The incompetence of the state, which pretty much can't run anything. And that these sort of functions should be in the hands of the private sector who do things much more competitively, much more efficiently. Why? Because they have a financial incentive to do that. Driver's licenses would be issued very quickly if, for example, the banking sector did it or any sector was given the responsibility to do this so that the administration of it would be as easy as pie. But no, the state in this country, given the ideology of those who are in power in this country, insist on things being centralized in the hands of politicians. Well, this is the effects of that. Speaking, of course, to uh, the Independent, which I saw this story in, which did the write-up, it mentioned that particular backlog that had been caused in the first time this machine broke down, uh, citing that this has caused wait times for a new license to reach a high of 58 days but by September officials in the tra transport sector had wrestled the wait time back to just 10 days big whoop although more than 1.2 million motorists were still driving with expired licenses that's of course according to Ufile Mbalula the minister of transport end of quote again you're going to have this sort of mishap happen all the time because I will underline exactly the points I've already made. Anytime something is monopolized into the hands of politicians and the political leads, expected to not work simply because they have no incentive to deliver on something. And why? Because when you work in the state, whether you fail or whether you succeed, you get paid anyway. Nice job that, isn't it? So for the rest of us who work in the real world where we have to deliver in order for us to reap the benefits of that, that's the ethos that we need to uh, effectively push for and make the argument for that services, many more services that are rendered by the states should be privatized. I take you now to KZN where the update and the follow-up to that story related to Uzweli Mkize. You remember, of course, Uzweli Mkize, the former health minister, implicated in the appointment, the dodgy appointment, allegedly, of company Digital Vibes that is said to, of course, be run by his friends and uh, bene the beneficiaries of which were some of his children. Well, that particular incident took an interesting turn recently after Zweli Mkize, in a piece in The Independent, um, seemingly indicated that he'd been cleared of uh, any wrongdoing. This, of course, stemming from a back and forth that had been happening between his attorneys and those of the state via, uh, representing, of course, the SIU, uh, indicating that he's cleared on the basis if I'm to understand the story, that uh, the SIU made predetermined uh, uh, outcomes or pronouncements insofar as his being implicated. And because the SIU couldn't provide a particular letter that either A, implicates him or proves that he had made the decision that uh, Digital Vibes be appointed, that, that on that he uh, concludes that he is cleared of any wrongdoing. Very awkward reasoning that, and uh, The Independent, of course, was the publication that ran with this particular story and uh, effectively viewpoint, uh, pointing out as follows, that in the unit's response, which came to Umkize's legal team via state attorneys, and which the Daily News, that's an independent publication, had seen, it said, quote, we reiterate that the documents referred to in paragraph seven of your letter either does not exist or are not in the SIU's possession. Uh, this continued, of course, that that prompted Umkize to call for the report to be amended so that his name 
could be cleared. He said the SIU had no evidence against him, end of quote. Again, very odd circumstances, as I mentioned, uh, for him to use this as somehow an indication that there was no evidence against him. Indeed, to maybe prove that point, the SIU, through its spokesperson, coming out uh, now and saying, actually, Mkize has not been cleared by any process that the SIU can even initiate because this matter is before the court. Reading, of course, from the uh, News 24, which basically quoted the SIU, it says the following. The Special Investigative Unit says it hasn't cleared anyone in the so-called Digital Vibes scandal. It's quoted as saying the matter is currently before the High Court, the unit said on Wednesday morning, following a media report that former Health Minister Uzuelim Kize had been, quote, cleared. Due to this matter pending in court, the SIU will respect the court process and not comment any further. The matter, of course, involves, as I mentioned, the allegations that a multi-million rand contract uh, was irregularly awarded to Umkize's associates. That, of course, is the latest in this matter and indeed does beg the question, is there politics at play here with Uzuelim Mkize obviously vying for the ANC presidency? Is there a rush, perhaps, from his uh, front you know, to, quote, clear his name so that his ascendancy or his attempt to ascend to the top throne of the ANC is seen as clean, clear, and without the dark cloud of corruption and alleged corruption and fraud that effectively stems from his days as Minister of Health and involves digital vibes. All right, that's it for today's episode of Vuganazo. This is the Thursday edition of the show. Let me know what you think of the stories covered. Your comments, of course, are always welcome. And uh, a reminder to you that if you want to get in touch with us here at the show, maybe you've missed any of our other episodes, check out our website, please, at www.bigdaddyliberty.com. There, of course, you'll catch up with the show. And, of course, all of our social media details are in the descriptors of this video, whether you're watching it on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Speaking about YouTube, do me a massive solid favor. Uh, how about you subscribe to the channel and please hit that bell notification so that every weekday from 7 a.m. you'll be notified when Ivuganazo is on your screen. So that being said, let us start your news day. And of course, if you visit our friends over at the Daily Friend, that's www.dailyfriend.co.za, they will help you round up your news day with their show every Monday to Thursday at 1.30pm. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow on Vuganazo.